I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm excited to journey with you as we learn how to take your health back. Today, we, we will be discussing the health of Hawaii small businesses since COVID lockdown. We are coming to you live from my home office in Makiki and from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii, which are located in downtown Honolulu. Today, we shall be talking story with two very concerned and dedicated business owners who want to know who is essential in Hawaii and how much more can we endure. Today, I'd like to introduce you to the Aloha Freedom Coalition, which was formed to assist businesses own, uh, business owners during these times of COVID lockdowns. We have with us today, Hela Meek and Lori Kahiapo, who are very active, I mean, very active members of the AFC, which stands for the Aloha Freedom Coalition. Welcome, ladies. Thank you, Wendy. You're yeah. welcome. All righty, let's jump right in. Okay, so let me start with the first question. Tell us a little bit about what is Aloha Freedom Coalition. Thank you so much, Wendy. Thank you for giving us the platform to, uh, to reach out to other people in Hawaii. So the Aloha Freedom Coalition is um, it's a fellowship of citizens of Hawaii who are very concerned about the, um, the situation that we find ourselves in with this COVID-19. And we feel compel and compelled to stand in opposition to the unreasonable, what we feel are unreasonable and oppressive um, government guidelines. Um, and so we just formed a group and we're, we're trying to expand our group and, and get more people involved. Um, we have a motto. Our motto is to maintain freedom, to uh, preserve Aloha, and to protect Ohana. Um, we in the Aloha Freedom Coalition, uh, which was established in September of this year, 2020, we fear an open-ended cycle of emergency lockdowns hanging over us. Um, and we believe that these lockdowns infringe upon our fundamental rights to make a living, our constitutional rights. These rights are protected under the first and the 14th amendments of our constitution. So we're afraid going forward that these lock, this lockdown strategy is going to continue. Um, so we, we, wanna, we wanna do something about that. Um, we also believe that our mainly, one of our main concerns is for the small businesses that are in Hawaii. Um, yeah. We believe that uh, the neighborhood cafe on the corner, the, the small bar or restaurant where we love to meet up with our friends and, and have dinner and, and have fun with them. We believe the little business, the little store where you can buy, find that perfect gift. We believe that uh, bed and breakfast and, we, and all those little, business, uh, little businesses are essential. Um, so we just feel that it's, it's discriminatory against the small businesses in Hawaii uh, to be labeled as non-essential because they are essential. They are essential to each business represents up to 29 people and all of them are affected by the closures. So the Aloha Freedom Coalition is, is like I said, it's a, it's a group of very concerned citizens of Hawaii Many of us are business, small business owners who, who want to do something about this. We, we want it to stop. And we are asking the community, don't you agree? Don't you feel the same way that we do? Wow. All right. I know a little bit about the AFC, and we'll call it the AFC for now for time's sake. Um, you know, when I, I went to one of the meetings just to understand uh, what I was getting uh, to put forth to our viewers, I know that there are four active committees within the Aloha um, Freedom Coalition. So maybe, can you just tell us a little bit about what, tell us about some of the committees there. Sure, we start, we're starting out with four uh, main pillars. Uh, business, the church, uh, government, and the media. Um, I am running the business part of the Aloha Freedom Coalition 
but we are very concerned about uh, freedom of religion, which is also a constitutional right that we have as Americans, and how we are being restricted from worshiping, from singing, from meeting together in church. So our church group is very concerned. Um, as far as our government pillar, we're trying to work with the community to um, showcase certain candidates that we feel align with our values as a group, uh, standing for our freedoms and our rights. Um, so that would be government and that also includes uh, law enforcement. So we're trying to include law enforcement in our government group. And through this group up until now, we have an election today, we have been uh, sign waving and showcasing certain candidates through the government. And then the last group is media. And we have a, a group of very talented people who um, have managed to put up our website and our Facebook page, our Instagram page and our Twitter page. And we're gathering um, photos, we're gathering events, uh, you know, we're gathering information. We wanna educate people through the Aloha Freedom Coalition about what our rights are as business owners and as citizens and also science. We want to inform people on not just the one uh, directive that we're receiving about science, but other approaches to science. Uh, so we're using the Aloha Freedom Coalition and our four pillars as a platform to try to educate the community and gather support in the community. We believe that if we join together as one voice, one united voice, then we can actually um, change the course of of, of our of our life here in Hawaii together as concerned citizens. All righty. So maybe Lori, can you tell us, um, you know, again, a little bit more about each of the pillars um, that you me mentioned? I know, I mean, the pillars, the committees. Uh, I know that we have some slides, like with the, that one was showing was a stay-at-home slide. And I know that you wanted to talk a little bit about that. Can you just expound on that, please? Yes. So, um, yeah, so that that would kind of deal with our government group we're really um wanting to um help help the public uh, understand which candidates are uh, in agreement with our vision of the aloha freedom coalition which is for freedom our basic freedom and our rights our constitutional rights and so we've aligned with several candidates and if you go to our website you can actually find a link um with with recommendations that we might have for you and um because Please understand though, this doesn't end after today, after the election. This is only right. the beginning. We right. plan to keep going because our freedoms are at risk um, from now on, you know? And so it's really important, um, we feel to elect people that will use common sense, that will use honest evaluation of facts. So we don't have to uh, resort to these strict communist style edicts and limit our freedoms. So. It's been a, a, a wonderful opportunity to get to know the candidates and help others get to know them, um, to let them know that we're behind them, that there is a whole coalition of people, which is why we need more people uh, with us, because uh, we feel like as a group that has a common vision, um, there's much strength. And because okay. everyone has their own giftings, their own viewpoints, um, and I, I, I love the way that we've been growing. It started small and it's slowly getting um, growing as we get the vision going and more business owners and more elected officials um, understanding where we're coming from. So we're really excited about that. Yes. And that's the most important part. You know, like I was a small business owner and during this, these times, if I was still a business, small business owner, I'd be beyond distraught. I wouldn't even be able to uh, uh, want to wake up, I'm sure, because it's just, it's quite depressing uh, if I could not open my business after having is established for the last 20 years and now all of a sudden someone tells me I can't do it anymore. So it's good that the people, the small business owners and the business owners have a, a, a place or a group that they can like sort of cry on your shoulders and on each other's shoulders because we're all in it together. And so it's very important that you, you are there and that we let more and more people know that, like you said, Lori, it will continue. It doesn't mean that today's election day and we stop. No, it's kind of just beginning. And the group is getting bigger and bigger. And wow. And so, Lori, um, tell us about another one of the committees. I know the slide says uh, five or less. What a mess. So tell us a little bit about that. 
Okay, yeah. So um, Hella did touch on the media group, which we are really excited to have some extremely talented, pe talented people and also welcoming others who, who really feel moved to this uh, committee, this pillar, because we feel it is important that people have a platform where they can come and find truth, um, common sense truth. So we, um, our team puts together um, and assesses uh, the virus risks balance again with the full consequences and cost of the response, uh, response options. So we wanna bring um, accurate uh, information to people to dispel many of the fears um, that, uh, of course we know that fear, it, it petrifies, it um, paralyzes us. And um, it's just not a good place to be in. So we wanna help to bring truth. And so that's why our website is really important. Um, we want you to understand that um, there is a place you can go and find balanced uh, information. And so this is one of the posters they came up with, of course, because um, as you can see, look at families have more than five children. And, you know, for many of the tiers, you can only be out with five people in your same right. house. And it just doesn't make sense. Hawaii is about Ohana. The United States is about family. That's, that's a pillar of our, um, of our, of our living. That's the way we live. That's just who we are. And right. to say that you, I heard of a family that had, um, I think four children, they got pulled over by police because they had six in their car. Now, what are you going to do? Another right. friend went to bring their child out to dinner and they had four children. And so, um, so the, the dad said, okay, put, put my baby, my one-year-old in another table, we'll get, a, we'll get a high chair. Go ahead. You know, it, it's just that ridiculous. And, and right. so these moves feel like they're, they're tearing us apart, tearing businesses, tearing families. Um, right. Think about our kupuna. Think yeah. about our kupuna who are truly suffering. Yes. And I have heard um, one, one kupuna, my friend's mom said she almost rather die than not, not be with her loved ones and not be able to even talk to them and I hear that a lot I hear that a lot that they don't want to experience anything further when they are pulling up the families and tearing them apart and breaking down businesses that they probably started and passed it to their friends exactly. or their family yes mm -hmm. I hear that statement a lot and what a sad statement to hear from our rich population of Kupuna yes and they are our treasures and to yes. hear them um I, I like I believe common sense is this and it's been all through history when there is a plague, when something comes around like this, you um, quarantine those that are that are elderly, and frail, or vulnerable. Yes. And you know what? We know our risks. It's up to us if we want to go out. It's up to these kupuna if they want to have their their grandkids over. They know their risks, and that's freedom. And that's what this country was founded upon: freedom. Right. So take away these rights to just to just live with aloha the way we've always lived, mm -hmm. our fundamental right to um, freedom is, is at risk. And that's why we're here. We're so passionate and we want, we love our kupuna. Um, I happen to have called Nancy the other day. She's in a, um, one of those living, living communities. Mm -hmm. And he just thanked me just profusely for just calling her. And that's how lonely mm -hmm. we are. So for you that have kupuna, you know, call them, have, your grand, have the grandkids yes. call. They need you more now than ever. Wow. So, Lori, thank you. And I know there are four committees. we got to move along. And you expounded on two of them. And now we talk about the third one. And I think we have a picture of the flag. So I can only guess what that one is all about. So share with us the third committee. Okay. So as we know, um, the third committee is about churches. And uh, this is a, such a passionate group and leader. And they really want to unite the body of Christ and inform them of not only their God given their uh, constitutional rights, but the God given Juliana, their responsibility to maintain the freedom to worship and gather, to bring their people together. Um, without faith, who are we, right? And I, I tell people many times, I've had such um, many ups and downs in life, like we all have. But faith is one strong pillar. I think the strongest pillar in our in our lives. And so to take that away from people is just not right. We have the freedom now to fight for our freedom. Um, you know that the First Amendment says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof 
or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right of the people to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. Now, if you notice nationally, they, they're allowing these protests, that part of the amendment to go through, but they're not allowing churches to gather and they're not allowing them that freedom. And we need to stand together uh, to help one another um, to, uh, to establish once again that freedom because many churches are not gathering and many people are feeling the brunt of it. We need right. our faith in this day and age. Yes. We, we truly, I mean, I'm, I'm affected big time, 25 years sitting front row center at church and now it's not. I sit in the front row of my sofa watching TV uh, as they pipe it in streaming live. So I understand truly. And so now the last part, lastly, you have a large committee dedicated to our local small businesses, which have been so adversely affected by the COVID lockdowns. So Hella, maybe you can tell us a little bit about how small businesses are affected uh, with this COVID. Uh, well, um, it's it's very very unfair. The the big box stores, the large corporate businesses, which are deemed essential, are are able to profit and thrive during this uh, COVID lockdown, and the little uh, small independent businesses that are deemed non-essential are forced, due to overbearing regulations, to close their doors, and they're also uh, under. Uh, heavy threat of penalties, very high penalties. The small businesses uh, are a very, very high percentage of Hawaii's economy is sm the small business, the independent small business. And um, this, uh, this is gonna affect Hawaii for years to come if, if these businesses are not able to reopen. The state is trying to help them, you know, with funding and, 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 and other resources. But many of them are falling through the cracks. They don't qualify for one or another reason for the funding. Um, many of them, for example, restaurants and cafes and bars who are dealing with products that are perishable, it's very difficult for them to, to know what they should uh, purchase, how much food they should buy, when at any time, arbitrarily, the state can shut them down again. Um, they also need to have had, after the first lockdown, they needed to invest very high amounts of money for this PPE equipment, for sanitary equipment, for plexiglass, for masks, for all these yes. things that are supposedly needed now to, to run a small business. And honestly, um, we just believe that small businesses are able to, uh, to navigate through this, this situation with common sense. And, and to be fully open without necessary uh, overbearing restrictions from the government. We think that we can do that. We think that we have the ability to navigate this crisis without these draconian, uh, broad and arbitrary measures that are being forced upon us and have a, are having a terrible uh, result. We have in Hawaii, um, the most severe lockdown in the whole country at this point. And we have the biggest reduction in our economy right now in the country. And we have the highest rate of business closures in the country. Um, we want this to stop. We, we don't want this to continue. And we're asking everybody out there, don't you agree? Don't you want this to stop? Don't you think there's a better way to mitigate this virus than uh, this broad stroke this broad brush that affects everybody the same even though everybody is not the same right wow oh so with such a dim forecast for so many small businesses if yeah. the lockdowns persist Hella, how does this affect our local residents well many residents i believe who have had to close their businesses i think over a thousand businesses have closed already uh they're going to have to they're in debt many of them are deeply in debt they've cleaned out their savings in order to try to do the right thing, to, to follow the rules. Um, and they're going to have to close and they're going to have to leave the state because how can they stay? I mean, how can a restaurant owner who lives on a very small margin as a profit be expected to continue functioning on a 50% or less um, model? It's just not, it's, it just doesn't make sense. It's not feasible. I think that Ultimately, small independent businesses are not going to be able to survive. And the big 
corporate businesses are going to thrive. And we feel that that is discriminatory. And it's, it's not good for Hawaii at all. For sure. I mean, we just heard the sad news about Alan Wong and he's, his yeah, exactly. restaurant is already locked down and, and closed up. So we can't even go have our last meal there. But uh, it's, right. it's done. The history of all those memories of, and the traditions, uh, another one is done. And so for Alan Wong, you know, we, we just um, say mahalo for all the years of great, mm -hmm. great culinary experiences that he shared with the rest of Hawaii and the world. And um, just so sad to hear about another one. And I just, that's the worst part about the news, hearing that one more business goes under. Yeah. So Ellen, you know, you're really passionate about um, all this. Um, what brought you? Uh, what brought you and Lori, I'll get to Lori as well. What brought you both to this small business group? You know, it really, I've never been involved in politics, actually. And, and I recently sold my business six years ago. So I am working from home now. I'm still, I still have a small business, but I'm working from home. I'm no longer in retail. Um, but it, it all started with this, this uh, actually Bud Stonebreaker's campaign, to be honest. When I saw his video, it really resonated with me. I felt like finally there was somebody who understood the bigger picture rather than following a narrative or uh, just following a, a guidelines given from above. I felt like here was a candidate who was an independent thinker and he could see what was coming down the pipe. He said that if we kept going the way we're going, we would end up in poverty or in prison. And now, six months later, the picture is a lot more clear. So that's what got me started. And uh, when, when his campaign did not result in, a, in an election, he was not elected as mayor, we discussed amongst each other, what do we do now? How, you know, we really got excited. We really, for the first time in my life personally, was I was involved in politics and civics. I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to get out there and, and do something. And so we, we discussed, what do we do now? And we decided, let's keep going. Let's form a group, a new group. We called it the Aloha Freedom Coalition because we believe in Aloha. We believe in Ohana. We believe in a, our treasured way of life here in Hawaii where we love our family. We love to get together with our friends and family. It's not natural for us to be isolated, to not be able to hug each other, to not be able to visit our, our kupuna. And so we decided we're gonna do something about this. We are going to get together, we're gonna to form a coalition and we want many, many people to join us because we see that many people feel the same, they, the same way that we do. And those who may not have felt that way a few months ago are starting to see that in the long run, this is, this is just not, it doesn't, it doesn't feel right. This feels very wrong. So that's why we, we, we formed this coalition and, uh, and we're very, working very hard to, to make a difference going forward. Wow, and we thank you. I know many who are finding out about the Aloha Freedom Coalition are going to be very grateful that there is a group of people that um, have a heart for each other to save each other and to just be there for each other. So um, we're going to get the word out so that we can help more. And um, mm -hmm. now I want to ask Lori, so Lori, are you a, are you too a small business owner? Tell us about yours. Yes, so my husband and I have had a musical entertainment business for about 24 years. Mm -hmm. um, that's my husband's full-time work and I actually joined him uh, full-time. Oh, about that's your husband. Kabika <laughs> Kaya. <laughs> that's the guy, I know him. <laughs> oh, he's your business. Oh, does he know that? Okay, oh, sorry, Lori, keep going. Okay. Um, yeah. So we, um, you know, it was, it, it's been 24 years he's been doing this. And so I recently had quit my job because things were getting busier and busier. We were booking entertainment for other venues, outer island and so on. And it was really nice to work together um, in the same industry. And um, gosh, about four months after I had, had quit my former job and uh, we were rolling, we, you know, one week in March, one uh, one gig at a time would call us and cancel. Sorry, we're done. Sorry, we're done. Indefinite. And we, you know, be, having been through so many things in life, you know, we turned to God, we turned to Aku, we turned to Christ and we just said, Lord, we just kind of laughed and said, what next? You know, we don't know. We didn't know much about, you know, like most of us, we didn't know much about this, this uh, coronavirus. And so we were a little terrified at first, right? Until you get the information. Um, and then we thought maybe a month, maybe two months, but, um, you know, the months have gone on and not only my husband and our business, but many entertainers, you know, are not working. 
Um, yeah. it, it's been very hard. Unemployment is super minimal and some people don't even get that. All mainland tours have been canceled for us and for most people. Yes. Um, restaurants, though they're opening, are, are at half capacity, many of them unable to hire their entertainers back. Right. So, um, so my husband from working like four or five nights a week it is now we're blessed one night a week. Um, and we're very, very fortunate um, and blessed by and, and let's give a shout out, Laurie, to where he is working, where people can still go and hear him. It's yes. at Duke's Waikiki. And you know, go there and support mm -hmm. these local, this local business that has um, just been always very, um, very kind and generous to not only their patrons, they've always yes. been so welcoming and so much aloha there. Yes. And they've always, and you know, one thing, they didn't want to stop music. And Yay. so they're smart. They, they knew that the music would get their customers through when mm -hmm. they, whatever they came out to dinner for, they could yeah. come out of a great meal by the TS restaurants and then yeah. listen to great local entertainment. They, TS restaurants, I got to give a shout out. Dukes yeah. of Waikiki, hallelujah, amen. They're spot on because they know not just the tourists, but they take care of the locals and they continue to take care of our local entertainers. And that's so important. I mean, just for every, for our sanity as well as the entertainer's sanity as well. I mean, I know we know Melvin, and by the way, mahalo to Melvin for my beautiful shell necklace, but she goes online and she performs every Sunday from 11 to two online because she doesn't have a venue to go to. So Kavika, God bless you. You're being blessed and you're blessing Dukes for being a, for a, a constant performer there. And I believe he plays on Fridays. Is that right, Lori? Um, well, Starting November is going to be random Fridays to Saturdays. Okay. Um, I would try to post on his website, Kavika. That's Kavika. great. That's what we need to hear. And now yeah. we move on. And I, I know we don't want to neglect to address our precious Kiki. How yeah. has this affected them, Lori? You know, um, we all know children are being affected. According to Psychology Today, the research, the research has shown that children and adolescents are experiencing uh, mental distress due to the closures of schools and activities, sports, having to maintain social distancing, not being able to see their grandparents and their friends, um, wear masks. There's a lot of anxiety and worry and depression um, and even suicide. And people don't right. like to talk about that. Those stats are not readily available. So a lot of people don't realize it is a huge issue. My heart breaks breaks wow. mine too i know and you know i yeah. i just want i, I want to get to the next slide so i want to just make sure that we know how, we got to share with people how do people access your information and how do they join the freedom coalition movement so uh you can look for us on facebook aloha freedom coalition we're also on instagram and twitter we also have a website aloha freedom coalition.org and we, uh, we are having a, an upcoming meeting this November 7th at the Ranch Church in Waimanalo, mm -hmm. which is at 41539 Makakalo mm -hmm. Street. And all okay. the information is right there. Or just take that phone okay. number and call us. And yes. that would be the best thing because we got to say aloha to everybody right now. Okay. But you've got all that information. Watch the YouTube again. And you know what? Mm -hmm. Come join us at the ranch. And you know what, if yes. you know a business owner, please tap them on the shoulder and say, you know what, you got to come with me to this place. I'm going to mm -hmm. get you some help and your sanity back because yes. I, I met a group of people that really love and care for us. Come on mm -hmm. down. All right. So go ahead yes. and source that information. And right now, ladies, I just want to say mahalo to both of you for taking your time in your day and for being here and sharing your heart and your aloha with the rest of us. So right now, for now, aloha, everyone. And mahalo, mahalo to you. Mahalo. Aloha.